Hello my friends, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this cake, we're gonna do another art-inspired cake. This time we're going for a geode resin-inspired design. And for this cake, I topped it with some bubble sugar. And I will show you how I do that as well. If this sounds interesting, stick around. So first we need to make our bubble sugar. This is so easy, it's one ingredient. All it is, is glucose. Swear to goodness, it's just glucose. Now you're just gonna spread it fairly thin on your silicone mat. And have your oven preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now just make sure that you're getting this fairly thin. Because if you go too thick, it's gonna take forever to dry and you're not gonna get good bubbles. And then I wanted to go ahead and decorate it with some of the gold luster dust and then I dotted it with navy blue. This is just um, gel food coloring. And what you will notice is as this bakes, your colors kind of blend in. You're not gonna have these dots. It's gonna kind of blend all in together, just like here. Now the heat from the oven is what creates these bubbles. And you're gonna want them cooked for a good, how long did I have them bake? maybe 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, but check them. If you pull your tray out of the oven and the bubbles go flat and disappear, you need to keep baking it for a while because these bubbles need to set in their form. So just let it go as long as you need to, but don't overcook it because that is sugar, glucose is sugar, and they will burn. So just keep a good eye on them. And then we are going to go ahead and do the same technique, the wrap technique. This is how I do these um, acrylic inspired techniques. The gloss technique is go ahead and cut a piece of fondant the same size as a piece of acetate that you have cut to the um, height and circumference of your cake. And coat that acetate in a little bit of shortening and that is what gets your fondant to stick to it and brush off that cornstarch that you use to keep it from sticking to your counter. Now we're gonna need to cut a piece for the top too, and this is gonna be a six inch round. The easiest way to do this would be to get a six inch round cake pan and use that as your template on how big to cut this, but of course, I didn't have one right next to me, so I eyeballed it, but that's what I would suggest for you to do is go ahead and just use a pan and use that to cut it down. Now to do our geode, we are going to put some, this is just some, um, Piping gel. Piping gel is going to be our glue that gets our crystals to stick to the cake. And this is just rock candy. Just rock candy, just like you would do with a regular geode cake, but we're just doing it in a slightly different way. And we're just gonna go ahead and press these into the fondant so that they don't fall off when you lift it up. You might have some fall off some shed while you are transferring it, but that's okay, because you can go back in later and add some back in where needed. Now I had just kind of drawn out a little sketch on where I wanted the placement of the center of the geodes to be. You can do it however you want. And to get the size of the um, crystals to gradiate, gradiate, graduate down, whatever, <laughs> I am just using some, some um, clear sugar crystals. And I find that these add a lot of pretty shimmer to it too. So I did kind of sprinkle some throughout the middle. And just go ahead and press those in too. And then I used a little bit of um, disco dust. Some pearl, oh no, sorry, rainbow disco dust. That's what I'm using right there. Just to kind of sprinkle throughout to add a little bit more shimmer. Now you're going to want to set this aside to kind of, so that everything is adhered together, glued together real well. And do that while you prepare your mirror glaze. Mirror glaze is the key ingredient to doing this gloss technique. And the recipe I use is a, see, can you see the, the shimmer in there? Isn't that pretty? The lighting was not the best at this point. It was a cloudy day, so you can't really see it. But um, to make the, I'll get to that. I should get to this first. What I'm doing here is just piping gel and I heated it up for about 20 to 30 seconds and added some gold luster dust. And that's how I'm going to do this outside edge around the rocks. 
and I'm using these little silicone cupcake liners. They are really good for directing your, we're gonna call it paint. It's not paint, it's completely edible, <laughs> where you want it. And then I'm just using a skewer or a toothpick to just kind of um, redirect it, get it to, just to get it the way I want it to look. And then we're just using the white and I'm used navy and royal colors of mirror glaze. And you apply this just like you would on a, on a canvas. Just do your sections and then use your airbrush to blow them together a little bit. Just to kind of blend the two colors together a little bit, but you still want to see the differentiation. And then the recipe I used is, um, for the mirror glaze is Chell Sweets recipe. It is a white chocolate based mirror glaze and it's super yummy. And yes, you can use, there's gelatin in this recipe, but it works on fondant just fine. I've had people ask me that question. And typically, gelatin does not work with fondant. It can melt and make your gummy, your uh, fondant gummy, but it does not do that in this technique. I don't know why, it just doesn't, and that's wonderful. Because I tried to do this with buttercream, and it did not work. Trust me, it did not work. <laughs> So we do need to use fondant as our backing, as our canvas for this type of technique. Until I figure out a way to do it in buttercream better, better we're going to stick with fondant. And I used a marshmallow fondant and I will add a link to that recipe as well in the description box. Now I know I do have some blue that is inside the crystals, but I'm just gonna leave it there because this is going to sit in your refrigerator, or I'm sorry, in your freezer. Overnight, minimum overnight, on a flat board. I have a foam core board underneath the painting technique. Now I would suggest that you go back. I have two other, I think it's two other videos on how to do these acrylic pour inspired cakes. And there's more details in those on things that I'm not covering in this video because I can't cover everything in one video all the time. I do suggest going back and watching those to get any details that you're not getting that I'm using on here. And then for that top, I just added a little bit of shortening on top of the buttercream that had been set in the refrigerator. The cake had been set in the refrigerator overnight. So that buttercream is set up. So you can add shortening on that top to get that top piece to stick. And then on the sides, I just use piping gel. And that's what's going to get our um, fondant to stick to our buttercream. And what I did there was I had another piece of acetate cut the same size as this panel and put some shortening on it because I'm going to place it on top of this. Believe it or not, on top, since it is set up in the refrigerator at least overnight. Um, I, I would give it at least 24 hours. There's a piece on it. I don't know if you can see it there. That acetate is on top of there. But since there's shortening on it and it has burned up in the freezer overnight in a dry freezer, um, it's not going to stick. If you did that without adding shortening to it, it would stick and it would ruin your effect. So make sure you add a good bit of shortening on that piece of acetate. And just wrap it around your cake and make sure that you get push out all the air bubbles and remove your acetate. Now, if you need to redirect, cut a small piece of acetate like I have there, add some more shortening to it, and that way you can you can kind of manipulate it a little bit. A little bit. But you want to move fairly quick with this because as it comes to room temperature, if you touch it, it does become a little bit more gummy. If you don't touch it, it's fine. And then on that bottom, I knew that I was going to have to cut that down to size. So that's why I did not put the sugar, rock sugar, um, rock crystals, sugar can, rock candy, <laughs> all the way to the bottom to begin with. Because I didn't want to have to try to cut through the candy to get it uh, the right height for the cake. So I just left a little bit bare on the bottom. And then just went in and filled that in with a little bit of piping gel to get it to stick. Now that gold that I had done on the outside edge, I didn't find that I thought it was um, bright enough, reflective enough. I used a different gold luster dust that I had bought a long time ago and forgot I had and I wanted to use it up, but now I remember why I didn't finish it. I like this one much better and I will add this in the description, a link to this product as well. And I just mixed it with some um, Everclear. 
I find for me gets the best coverage. You can mix it with vodka, but you might end up needing to do more than one coat. With the Everclear, I find one coat is just fine. You can also use lemon extract. That works fine too. But again, same thing. You might have to do more than one coat. And then just go in and redefine some of these or define some of these veins that you would find in a geode. Now, I know this pattern is very busy, but this is a geode center that we're doing here. And there are lines, there are striations in it. So that's what we did. And I think this gold veining through it really tied the whole thing together. And now to finish it off, I'm going to go ahead and add some to the center of the geode. You could add one of the colors that you had in um, around the centers of the geodes. You can do that too, or you can leave it as it is. I just thought it needed a little something. It was a little too white. And I felt I did want to add more color because I felt like there was enough color pattern going on already. So I figured the uh, gold would define it without making it too obnoxious. And then to add it extra clear gloss finish because resin is very glossy, I'm just using confectioner's glaze. I'm just spraying on the confectioner's glaze. I ended up doing two coats of this, but I only showed you the one. But I let that one dry, and then after I added these toppers, I went back in and I added another coat. Just make sure you wipe your, your board off right away because that confectioner's glaze is hard to get off. If you don't remove it right away, it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave a film, a very sticky film, and it's you might not be able to get it off. So go ahead and clean that up right away. And then to get the bubble sugar to stick into the fondant, I just used a, a knife. It's a, um, a spatula, actually, an art palette knife, a sharp one, to just kind of cut a slit in the fondant and then just stick the bubble sugar right in there. And there we have it. My third installment, I think it's my third installment of my edible art series. We'll call it a series. I can't get enough of it. I hope you don't, guys don't get bored of this because I have other ideas too. And I hope you are inspired to give it a try. If I can do this, you guys can do it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to... Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.